On the floor at this first day of the Republican Convention, we've heard a few uh, all right speeches and quite a few ho-hum type speeches. We would like now to demonstrate how the English language ought to be used by two craftsmen, our guest commentators. William F. Buckley, Jr., a conservative Republican, columnist and commentator, and one-time candidate for mayor of New York. And Gore Vidal, author of, among other works, John Kennedy's favorite Broadway play, a play about a convention called The Best Man. Mr. Buckley, you've studied the potential candidates. Which two do you think would make the strongest Republican ticket? <clears throat> I should think that uh, among those who are nowadays being uh, considered, the two strongest would be Mr. Nixon and Mr. Reagan. I say, say that not only because I consider them to be <clears throat> competent, but because I do feel uh, that uh, both Mr. Nixon uh, and Mr. Reagan uh, have a sense of uh, a communicable a conviction that the Republican Party has something distinctive to offer. There is, I think, a little bit too much in some of the others of the sense that schematically the Republican Party ought to arrive at position A, B, C this particular year. But the other two, I think, uh, grew up in the Republican Party with some uh, sense of <coughs> mission. Mr. Vidal, can you make the onerous effort of hypothesizing yourself a Republican for just a moment and saying which two you think would be strongest if you wanted to win for the Republicans? Well, that's quite easy for me since I'm not, don't think of myself as a Democrat either. I would say that watching the convention this morning, it became quite clear to me that John Wayne and his daughter would be the ideal <laughs> ticket for the uh, party. But thinking about the country's interests, I would say that if Rockefeller and Percy were a ticket, they could certainly do very, very well in picking up a great deal of disaffected Democratic votes, particularly if McCarthy should be spurned in Chicago, which may very well happen. I could see about half of the young activists of the McCarthy movement coming out to Rockefeller and Percy. Rockefeller and Reagan would certainly be a much more certain ticket for the Republicans to win with, but if they did win, I wouldn't like to be Mr. Rockefeller. Somebody from Orange County might speed up the electoral process. So, all in all, I would say that Rockefeller was the best man for the independents and Democrats that might vote for a Republican. One of the conspicuous features of this convention has been the way all the Republican leaders have played down ideology. There have been no floor fights, none are scheduled, the platform wasn't really fought over. Um, this is good, perhaps, for winning votes, but it does blur the rationale of the Republican Party. Mr. Buckley, what does the Republican Party stand for now? Is it in flux or what? Yes, it is in, in flux. Or actually, all political parties should be, to a certain extent, in flux. The question is whether or not the Republican Party uh, believes um, uh, strongly enough in a series of uh, uh, convictions to, uh, uh, to convince a lot of voters that uh, there is inherent in the Republican view of life a certain stability which is associated with the growth of the United States. Now, if I may say so, Mr. Smith, it's extremely interesting uh, uh, and extremely lively to sit by and watch uh, professional uh, critics of the Republican Party uh, burlesque uh, people whom uh, the Republicans themselves tend to like. You, you, you may have forgotten that a few moments ago we were treated to Mr. Gore Vidal, the, the playwright, saying uh, that after all, Ronald Reagan was nothing more than a, quote, an aging Hollywood juvenile actor. Now, to, to begin with, everybody is aging. <laughs> uh, even uh, even uh, you are, Bill. Bill. You are, right. Bill. Yes. Yeah, so, so therefore, so, so our therefore our... that adjective didn't contribute anything uh, extraordinary to the human understanding. Then he said Hollywood. Now, one was either acted in Hollywood during the time Mr. Reagan acted, or one didn't uh, act uh, at all. Uh, Mr. Vidal <laughs> sends all of his books to Hollywood, many of which are, are rejected, but some of which are grind out in some way. Oh, he was, Bill, I never said any of that. He called, he called him a juvenile quickly. actor, uh, which is presumably to be distinguished from uh, an adult uh, uh, actor. Now, my, my point is yes, that if you, play, if you play this sort of a game, you can say, look, I don't think it's right to present Mr. Gore Vidal as a political commentator of any consequence, since he is nothing more than, uh, uh, than a literary producer of, uh, uh, of, of a perverted uh, Hollywood-minded prose. 
Now, now, Bill. I, I, I think, think this time uh, around, for a very simple reason, that is that. Uh, now, Bill, if I may say, just, so, just I, as I, I think ABC I think has the right. Idea, Bill, just as I think not... ABC has the authority. Now, Bill, to invite, I'm now. almost through. No, you're not. Uh, in every sense. Think, just, just, just Let Mr. Buckley think, finish you know, this sentence. Then, just Mr. Vidal, I assure you, time to refute it. That ABC has the authority to invite the author of Myra Breckenridge. Uh, to comment to uh, comment on uh, Republican politics, I think that the people of California uh, have the right, when they speak overwhelmingly, to project somebody into national politics, even if he did commit the sin of having uh, acted in movies uh, that were not written by Mr. Vidal. How about Mr. Vidal's answer to that? Now? Well, as usual, Mr. Buckley, uh, with his enormous and thrilling charm, uh, manages to get away from the issue toward the comedy. He's always to the right, I think, and almost always in the wrong. And you certainly must, uh, Bill, maintain your reputation as being the Marie Antoinette to the right wing and continually imposing your own rather bloodthirsty neuroses on, on a political campaign. In the case of Ronald Reagan, I said he's a juvenile actor in the sense that uh, that was pretty much what he was cast as. As a presidential candidate, which is, after all, what we're talking about, and since we, it's, uh, it is our country to think that a man who, as of yesterday, was saying that the administration is trying to pour down our throats uh, what might have been good medicine during the days of the Depression, but he said, the patient got well a long time ago. That means the United States. This will come as news to the 30 million poor people. It will come as news to the people in the ghettos, the people that, I'm afraid, uh, voted against you so heavily when you ran for mayor, Bill. When you kept reminding the Negroes in Harlem that uh, was it their landlords who came up tippy-toe in one of your favorite verbs and threw the garbage out of the windows for them. And, uh, no, I think all in all... <laughs> You're pretty hard that, 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 that a man who is, uh, has finally said, as of yesterday morning, Ronald Reagan says, the only function of government is to get out of our way and leave us alone as much as possible. Now, on this occasion, I'm afraid I have to agree with William Buckley, the distinguished thinker, when he says, my favorite quotation from him, I have a treasury here, today as never before, the state is the necessary instrument of our proximate deliverance, as usual in your slightly Latinate and inaccurate style, but you do feel, as most of us do, that uh, the state must have some responsibility for what happens in the country, and now you have a Ronald Reagan whom you approve of who does not want to use the federal government to do anything at all. Mr. Smith, uh, I, I confess that anything complicated confuses Mr. Vidal. <laughs> this has been plain for a very long time. He has a great difficulty reconciling uh, uh, even uh, axiomatic positions concerning political philosophy, but I, I was invited here <laughs> and am prepared to try to talk about the Republican convention. Yes. But, but I maintain that it's very difficult to do so when you have somebody like this uh, saying uh, uh, that uh, Mr. Nixon, who is about to be nominated, I gather, from listening to you, uh, that uh, there, he is running for no, quote, discernible purpose other than his own best interest. Now, what does that mean, discernible? I'll tell you. Uh, would you like me to tell you what it means? No, not till 